I would now like to give the floor to the Executive Director of the World Food Program, Mr. David Beasley. Thank you. It's great to be with each and every one of you again. And uh, World Food Day should be a day that we're celebrating all our successes. And there have been quite a number of successes in the past many decades of how we've reduced hunger all over the world. And particularly with 75 years of success at FAO and all of us partnering together. But quite frankly, it's also a sad day because when I look ahead over the next 12 to 18 months, with COVID compounding the economy worldwide and devastating supply chains around the world, the house is burning. When you see that the number of people that are now marching towards starvation has spiked from 135 million up to 270 million people, that is unconscionable and it's a disgrace on humanity. What's so sad is the fact, on top of that, it's 690 million people that go to bed chronically hungry every night. And in a world where there's $360 trillion worth of wealth, well, it's inexcusable. We've got the expertise, we've got the technology, we've got the capacity, and we have the wealth to make certain that not a single child on earth goes to bed hungry. And yet, every three to five seconds, a person on earth is dying from hunger. We've got to do better, and we can do better. When I look at the report that we're issuing today called The Cost of a Plate of Food 2020, it's hard to believe that 186% of the income, of the average daily income of a South Sudanese, for example, is for a plate of food. If a New Yorker were eating on a a regular lunch, not a pricey place, not a fancy place, but just a regular diner getting a regular meal. That meal, based on South Sudan's numbers, would be 200, I'm sorry, $393. Now, it's bad enough that they're facing conflict and war and issues, but it's another thing because what we're seeing a war economy, conflict, COVID on top of all this, it's really quite extraordinary. When 2 billion people in the informal economy are struggling because of COVID and economic deterioration, when 495 million jobs have been lost, when deflation is taking place with or devaluation or declining currencies, inflation at the same time taking place, spiking in food prices around the world, and we begin to see why people are struggling and why 2021 is going to be a very difficult year. We've been able to avert famine in 2020. Why? Because 2019 was a strong economy and budgets were strong. And so we received a, tr a tremendous amount of support for 2020. But the largest economies in the world have put $17 trillion of economic stimulus packages into their own nations, which has helped but they've also released sufficient reserve funds to help all of us in this trying times. And we've averted the debt or deferred the debt of middle and low income countries until 2021 so they can have safety net programs in 2020. And I could keep going, but there's not gonna be monies available for economic stimulus packages in 2021 and extra reserves for us in the humanitarian sector in 2021. So 2021 is looking very bleak. But I believe if we reach deep into the hearts, into the pockets of people around the world, we can perform another miracle. But it's going to take another miracle. And I do believe that while we're working on the humanitarian crisis that we're facing in the next 12 to 18 months, we must continue to work on the systems to assure that we do end hunger by 2030. But as long as we have man-made conflicts, we will never end hunger. It's critical that we end the wars. It's critical that we respond to climate extremes. But I do believe if we strengthen the fragile governments out there, do the things that we know we have the expertise to do, I believe that we'll be celebrating World Food Day in a way we've never done before because hunger will be at an end. But it's gonna take the men and the women sitting together right now with the spirit to move forward to do just, just that. And so it's good to be with you. Thank you very much.